microbes run, and this isn't an exaggeration, every ecosystem on the planet that keeps us alive. And so I, I like to point out to people that if animals disappeared, the microbial world wouldn't even notice. Whereas if microbes disappeared, we would die pretty much right away. As those ice sheets are retreating and those polar bears are struggling, the entire microbial community around those melting ices is changing. And as that microbial community is changing, the whole way that ecosystem function is changing. And that's what's really interesting. You know, polar bears, we should save them and they're important. But actually, the real important science, I would argue, is happening in the sea around that retreating ice front. One of the things that I work on specifically are a group of microbes that make a greenhouse gas called nitrous oxide. And we know that the concentration of that gas has been increasing in the atmosphere. And so that's a direct example of where the activity of microbes and the changes that they're experiencing, we can measure that in their atmosphere. So we can measure the changes in the metabolism of these microbes. And the metabolism of those microbes is going faster because we're adding more and more nitrogen um, to grow our food that makes its way into soils and it makes its way into the ocean. And these microbes are having to process that nitrogen to keep waters clean. And in the process of doing that, they're producing more and more of these greenhouse gases. So we can detect the impact of microbes, but um, all the way up in the stratosphere, we can measure the um, activity of microbes here on Earth. What we're particularly interested in is coral bleaching and what causes it. And so I think there's very likely a viral component to that. And so that's what we were doing down in Curacao. We were trying to isolate viruses that kill coral, and or at least the symbiont that's in coral. And so we've got a bunch of experiments going on right now to see, in fact, if we can identify viral pathogens that might be involved in coral bleaching. And that's a huge thing right now in the Great Barrier Reef. A very large percentage of that reef right now is completely bleached. What happens on a coral reef normally is that it does actually support mostly uh, macro life. So big sharks, big fish, and then of course the corals provide the habitat and the structure that everything is just like a forest for a deer or something of that nature. The thing that we think is the most damaging is actually the overfishing of the big fish and the sharks. Normally there's a certain amount of photosynthesis going on. You always get a certain amount of sunlight, which means that you always get a certain amount of sugar produced, and that sugar can either feed the big fish or it can feed the microbes. So if you remove the big fish, then you start feeding the microbes. And the microbes, the more of them you feed, you get more of them, but you also get different types of microbes. And the types that you get are the ones that you don't want. They're actually the ones that go on to kill off the corals themselves. So there's a really tight connection between either uh, having a whole bunch of sharks and big fish and very few microbes or removing those and getting lots of microbes and killing off the corals. The oceans are so understudied. So what we really need now is to basically understand what the oceans look like now if we want to have any hope of understanding if they're changing. So there are very, there's very little known about microbes that live in the deep ocean. And so to be able to ask the question if we're affecting the deep ocean, if climate change is impacting the microbes in the ocean, we can't answer that question now. And it's going to take um, a lot of people and a lot of cooperation to figure out if we can um, answer that question to see if microbes in the ocean, especially the deep ocean, are changing as a result of the changes that we're causing on the planet. This kind of work is really important. You can imagine this big machine working, and it's a big complicated machine, and we know that we're doing things that are changing how that machine works, but we don't know how the machine works. And so you don't really know what the change is going to do. You're sitting there rattling some big machine and it's changing and you don't know what it's going to do. So the first order of business is to figure out how it's supposed to be get the baseline and then when change is happening you can see it. Right now we don't have the baseline. We don't know what the ocean's supposed to have in it. Um, I mean change is normal with evolution but we don't have a healthy baseline to go from. So we're measuring change as best we can from a moving baseline. So there's a whole lot of work that we need to get done really quickly if we're going to start looking at environmental change and how it's affecting these ecosystems. The world is getting warmer. 
the climate's going to change. Uh, and symbioses react different. So what, what happens is organisms react to changing temperatures, but symbioses react in different ways to changing environments, including temperature. And so understanding what will happen as the world changes, as the, as the ocean changes in, in acidity, as the world, as the temperature, uh, average temperature is warm, you have to understand how, how, how symbioses work to understand what, to, to have any idea of what's going to happen. Unfortunately for me, I'm relatively um, young and new in this field and a lot of the worst changes have already happened um, to the coral reef ecosystems, um, especially in the Caribbean. There's been really, um, that ecosystem has really fundamentally changed from what it was. So in a lot of cases, we're sort of playing catch up and trying to um, act kind of as forensic scientists and figure out what happened. I'd also say a lot of the changes that are happening to our oceans aren't necessarily visible to us. And by the time we can see it, it's kind of too late. So that's one reason that we're hoping by looking at the chemistry of the water and looking at what microbes are in the water, that might tell us something about what's happening in the ocean before it gets to a catastrophic state that we can see with our eyes.